Is the Google Pixel 4a worth buying in 2021? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. What's going on, everyone? This is Kevin here, and in this video, we're gonna be revisiting the Google Pixel 4a. Now, for full disclosure, I am part of Team Pixel, and this phone is a gift from Google, but all opinions expressed in this video are completely my own. Now, the Pixel 4a was launched last year, and it's probably not gonna be much longer until we do get the Pixel 5a. Now I'm definitely looking forward to taking a look at that phone, and if you are too, then I definitely recommend subscribing to the channel. Now with the Pixel 4a, we are getting a display that is a little bit on the smaller side compared to many other devices that have launched this year. But the display itself is 5.81 inches, and if you are someone that is looking for a phone that isn't necessarily that large as far as the footprint goes, then I think this definitely might be an option that you might want to consider. Now the display itself is OLED at 1080p. We're getting a PPI of 443. We're getting a 19 and a half by nine aspect ratio, and we're getting an 83.3% screen to body ratio. So in general, we are getting pretty small bezels here with the phone. Now up top here, we do have an eight megapixel front facing camera that is situated in a hole punch. Now in general, I am a fan of this hole punch design. I definitely prefer having that over any sort of notch or even having a thicker upper bezel. So I'm certainly a fan of that design. Now with this device, we're getting 128 gigabytes of internal storage, but there is no micro SD card expansion. Now 128 gigabytes is certainly a pretty generous amount. And I feel like for most people that is plenty, but just keep in mind that you aren't able to expand it any further than that. Now with the Pixel 4a, there is no wireless charging, but we do get a fingerprint sensor on the back of the phone. So let's give that a try right now. Very quick, one more time. That was very fast. So I'm certainly a big fan of having that fingerprint sensor and I do appreciate that it is nice and responsive. Now on the back side of the phone, we do have just one camera here and it is 12.2 megapixels. Now in general, the Pixel 4a takes really good photos there are already a variety of different videos, both on my channel and other channels as well, showing you what the camera is capable of doing. And it is pretty cool that despite having just one camera on the back of the phone, it does support portrait mode. So we are getting portrait mode for both the rear and front cameras. Really the only thing that this phone is lacking that you typically would find with other devices in its price range is an ultra wide angle camera. But then again, with this phone, we are getting a really good main camera. So if you're okay with having that compromise of getting a really good main camera, but then not having an ultra wide angle camera, then I think you'll be very happy here with the device. But if you are somebody that already does take a variety of different photos and videos with the ultra wide angle camera on your current device, then you might wanna consider getting another phone that does have an ultra wide angle camera. Now, thankfully, if you do want to have that feature, you can still get it with a Pixel phone as the Pixel 5 and 4a 5G both do have ultra wide angle cameras. Now with this device, we're getting six gigabytes of RAM and the Qualcomm Snapdragon 730G. Now from my experience of using the phone, things do perform very nice and smooth here. So the phone definitely is very well optimized to work very good with the hardware. Now I did run a benchmark test using Geekbench 5, and I'll show you the score from that test right here. But you can see I got a single core score of 551 and a multi-core score of 1649. So what I recommend doing is comparing these scores to the scores of your current phone, and then from there, you'll most likely have a better idea of whether or not the Pixel 4a is a performance upgrade for you. But from my experience, I'm definitely very happy with the performance that I've been getting here with the phone, and I feel like overall, it certainly is a very good value. Now, video recording with this device does max out at 4K at 30 FPS, which is very awesome. And with this phone, we're getting a 3,140 milliamp hour internal battery, and we're getting 18 watt fast charging. So it's definitely really nice to see that we are able to recharge the phone at a pretty rapid pace. Now, since getting this phone, it has received the Android 11 update. Originally, it did have Android 10. And one of the biggest benefits of going with a Pixel phone over pretty much anything else is that you are gonna be getting updates much faster and way more consistently than you pretty much would with any other Android phone out there. Now, I know that Samsung has been getting better and better with their updates 
and they have promised for pretty much all of their phones to supply major Android software updates for multiple years. So that's definitely good to see. But from what I've seen, if you want a really clean build of Android and you also want to get updates for a long period of time, then there's not really much competition outside of the Pixel line. Now again, it's really good that Samsung is providing way more updates than they have in the past. But if you don't want Samsung's skin and you want kind of more of a stock layout of Android, then you're not gonna get that from Samsung. In general, the Pixel line of phones is pretty much unrivaled when it comes to getting software updates very fast and consistently for a very long period of time. So that certainly is one of the major selling points here with the Pixel 4a. So even if you were to get one in 2021, you'll at least know that you are gonna be getting a variety of different updates for many years to come. But taking a closer look at the hardware, the phone is made out of plastic besides the display, which is glass. Overall, I don't have an issue with that, and I definitely do recommend pairing this phone up with the case. Now taking a look at the left side of the device, we just have the slot for the SIM card, then on the right side of the phone, we have volume down, volume up, and then the power button. Then up top here, we have the noise canceling microphone and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Then on the bottom of the phone, we have the speaker, microphone, and USB-C port for charging and data transfer. And then on the back of the phone, we have the camera module, flash, fingerprint sensor, and the G logo. So is the Google Pixel 4a worth getting in 2021? In my opinion, yes, I do think it is worth it. And really what especially makes this phone a good thing to get even now that it's been out for a decent amount of time, really is that long-term pledge that the phone will continue to get quite a bit of software updates and security patches too. So whether you buy this phone new or if you end up getting it somewhere used, it's really one of a small handful of affordable phones that will continue to get updates. And then combining that with the great photo and video quality that you are getting here with the phone certainly makes it a very unique option. Now, I personally have not looked too deeply into the various leaks and rumors regarding the Pixel 5a, but overall, the only changes that I would really like to see from this phone to that phone would be the addition of an ultra wide angle camera, maybe a larger display, and then also a better processor. But in general, I don't think they really should make too many major differences going into the 5A, considering that they already have a really good phone here. So instead of reinventing it, I think they should really just improve what they've already got because this phone really is a great option. But I hope you enjoyed this video about the Google Pixel 4A. If you did, give the video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.